Hello everyone and welcome to this week's tutorial. In this one I'm going to be doing the Mac side of things in terms of creating installers and we're going to be looking at how to use packages in DMG Canvas which allows us to create a package installer as well as then uh, put that into a DMG installer which is both signed and notarized using our Apple ID which lets it be trusted on any Mac computer that you have your users install on. So before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow me on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description as well, where you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, which comes with cool perks like Discord status, badges, and much more. And also check out the links for AE Scripts, Adobe Exchange, and Gumroad for other uh, tools and effects that I create. All right, so first we're going to look at packages, which is what we use to take all of our sort of extension files in most cases. You can also do it for scripts and other things if you want and compile them into a package installer, which essentially just distributes files into a location. If you're having trouble finding a software called packages uh, in whatever your browser is, just type in packages FR. Uh, it is made by a French person, so we can find it with the website instead.com FR, and it is called White Box Packages Resources, and it is, of course, free. So you can download it, and I have made a basic, basic tutorial, and in this one, I'm going to go into a lot more depth on how we can use it. Um, so generally, I would recommend to have some sort of template set up that you can use continually, and there are basically two things inside of your uh, packages installer that we're going to want to set up. That is the project settings and then the package uh, distribution itself. Under project, this is where we define sort of the general project settings. You can name your project, set the output path. And generally for this, I like to have a path somewhere which has the name of the product I'm working on and then files. Then in here, I'm going to store my uh, packages project file as well as my DMG canvas uh, project file and then all of the package and DMG export uh, files as well will all be located in here and we're also going to basically need a, a reusable folder with all of our uh, files in this case we have our extension files which we will continually uh, replace and then reuse in this folder here so in our project settings again we set the name the path where we're going to save all that too which we just saw the path there and all these settings generally are fine. Um, I don't really care much about these. And I do like to remove the DS store files because that can be annoying sometimes um, on some systems. Under presentation, this is totally up to you how much you want to customize it. But one important thing is to go uh, under title and make sure you change the name of your uh, title because this will carry over from your previous installer if you're using a template and you want to update the name to be whatever uh, you want that to be. And again, if you want to go in and do or read me in an introduction and all that, you can totally customize this if you want and even preview it in other languages and do all that kind of stuff if you want. I like to do just simple installers, um, which basically just do the installation and change the name. Um, if you want to, you can also require certain things on the user's startup disk. You can physically search for um, whether or not they have an OS installed, certain files, certain uh, disk space. And these are just some sort of uh, customizable things that you can add to make sure that the user has prerequisites before they install this. Uh, but again, generally, this is something that you can do on your own and something I don't usually do for installers because I'm just generally installing extensions for Adobe. And then in comments, you can leave any comments you want. That's pretty much it for project. And now under packages, this is the sort of meat of where we create the installer. We have our settings where we create our normal com identifier. For this, I basically just take the identifier of my extension and then add a dot installer. You can define a version number here if you want to. You can require a post installation behavior. For the most part, we don't need to reinstall or log out or shut down when installing extensions or things like that, so we're fine there. Um, you can also choose a custom location. Um, requiring an admin password for installation as well is relatively normal nowadays, so I'd recommend checking that. 
You can also require things to be closed before installation, so this may be useful if you want to make sure they have a fresh install, require them to close, say for example, uh, After Effects, which you could then add through here. We don't want our extension to be re relocatable, that's fine. You can overwrite the directory permissions, and uh, that's pretty much the only settings you need to mess with in settings. Under payload, this is where we actually define where the files are going to be installed. I've done this before in other tutorials, but generally for extensions, we want to go down into this grayed out library, then application support, Adobe, CEP, and then extensions. If none of these folders are there, you can simply uh, add them by using this interface here, and then we want the extensions folder to be our default destination. Uh, it might be set to something else, but make sure it's set to extensions. And then finally, we have our identifier for our extension, which we populate with our actual files from our computer uh, in that location here that I previously uh, mentioned. And in here, these files are directly linked. So if I remove these and update them to some newer version of the files, they'll also be automatically updated in here. And that is good as well. Um, and then finally, there are pre and post installation scripts you can run if required. Uh, this could be useful for a number of cases, whether it's moving a, a set of files, doing some preset work or something like that. And then the last thing is setting up a certificate. As you can see here, I already have a certificate put on here. Um, if you have none yet on your project, you can just remove it here and um, it'll have no, no little certificate thing here. You want to add a certificate to add a layer of security to this package, and then we'll be adding another layer for the uh, DMG. Um, we'll want to say project set certificate, and then you can select your developer certificate uh, based on whichever uh, team this is being developed for. Then finally to build, we just hit command B, and this is going to hopefully successfully build our package file. And this package file is going to be saved uh, to whatever location you selected. In my case, I have it all here organized uh, in this folder here. And you could distribute this if you wanted to. This is an installable thing, um, but we want to go the extra mile and provide a DMG, which is sort of the full on EXE type of uh, executable file um, that is much more professional as well on the Mac side of things. So now we're going to be looking at DMG Canvas. This does cost money, but with what it comes with, it's really worth it because not only does this have a customizable uh, uh, UI and a whole bunch of custom things to create your own little DMG installer and uh, basically mounter, it also comes with the built-in signing and notarization requirements uh, for Apple to make sure that your extension or whatever you're installing is working fine on any version of macOS and doesn't require any special permissions or workarounds to get working. So this is a worthy $20 investment, um, and it's actually cheap if you already have an older version, if you've seen maybe my previous tutorial. And let's go ahead and just look at it and see how easy it is to use and how easy it makes it uh, to make sure we're in compliance with all of Apple's standards. So I have a template for this generally too, but there's some basic things we can go over. So generally when you open this up, it's going to not even have a background image. Um, if you go into background, you can basically add your own image or add text. And I like to add this little um, display here that just says open this file to install. And then the file itself, we add in the content section, we simply hit add files. And then we navigate to that folder where we created that package file. And then here it is, we can just tell them to open this file to install. And that's uh, some simple UI stuff you can do in here change the background, add text, use a custom display or look, um, and you can even, of course, add other files into here as well. I believe not just package files. And then over here on the, the right side, we have all of our settings. This is mostly just window size settings, which you can you know change the background uh, to different things if you want. Generally, I just do this um, and call it good, or we could even maybe make it like a dark color. But of course, we can't see this because I do have an image in my background. Um, in the next window, we have all of our volume options. This is the really good stuff. So here we can define the name of our volume, which when we click on the installer itself, if I click on one of these example ones, it's actually going to appear here um, as if it's a loaded drive. So you can see here we have 
you know, what the display and DMG canvas is showing us to open this to install, but it's also mounted here. Um, and then we can unmount it when we're done. So it's just like any normal uh, professional installer. This is going to be the name of what appears when you mount it. You can also choose a custom icon, um, which is really cool as well. Um, and this will just add some customizability and then the built-in code signing and notarizing functionality. Um, if you don't have an Apple or developer account, that's going to be a little difficult, but you'll want to code sign and notarize. Um, you'll want to choose your code signing team that you're currently working with, your Apple ID that you're using, and then your bundle ID as well. For this, I just used the same thing that we used in packages. Um, all this other stuff you can change if you want. It's just general uh, compression and encryption. But then regarding this uh, signing information, we'll need to go up to DMG Canvas Preferences. And then under Notarization, we need to make sure we put in our Apple ID credentials to make sure all of this code signing and notarization works. So make sure you put in your associated Apple developer ID, the password to your account, um, and then your ASC provider, which is the various teams you might have. Um, in this case, I have this particular team that I'm exporting this through. So that's a, a lot of stuff. But basically, if you do that, you log in and you set this up in this uh, code signing section. Uh, not only will this create the DMG file to install your product, it's also going to uh, upload it to the Apple servers, get it verified by Gatekeeper, and uh, make sure that when any user on any newest OS or any old OS installs it, uh, it's going to trust it and allow them to easily install it. Uh, in the next window, you have file options. This is just to control like the size of your file previews uh, that are inside of here. You can also adjust uh, some text options in here, but generally that's all the options I mess with. I add this image and um, the package file for them to install. And of course I set up all my code signing and volume stuff. Then when you're ready to create this installer, you hit build and then you can choose a location and we'll just call this a test and hit save. Now, if you are not doing code signing and notarization, this process will be very quick. It'll be done as quickly as it takes to compile all of your files into the actual installer. But once it's done, if you do choose to do the code signing and notarization, you'll see this message saying notarizing the disk image. And you can actually see all the details here. It's notarizing and uploading the disk uh, to the servers for notarization. So this, of course, will the time this takes will depend on a few things. One is your internet speed, and two is the size of all of your files. If you have a several gigabyte uh, extension or product you want to create a DMG for, it's going to have to upload that whole thing. Uh, the actual once it's uploaded on the servers, the actual uh, approval process is very quick, and uh, you generally will not have an issue with that. But uploading it will take the longest. So once it's uploaded, you'll see waiting for Apple to notarize the disk image, and um, you can keep waiting, and uh, for me, I have my email address associated, so whenever it's done, um, I'm going to get an email saying either Apple successfully notarized your application, or you had a failure. Now, while I'm waiting, I guess I'll notice uh, note a few of the possible failures you might experience. A common one is if Apple updates their developer agreement and you need to accept it in your developer accounts. This will actually prevent you from doing this process. So if you get something that says like you need to sign something, go into your Apple developer account, look at all the licenses and certificates and make sure you are up to date and accepted all of those. A few other things would be the formatting. Uh, if it's not in a correctly zipped or packaged file, uh, it can have some issues um, notarizing that as well. But generally, as long as your account is up to date and all the files are in a general extension or plugin or scripting type format, um, things will uh, notarize, upload, and be done correctly. And then not only is it going to do the notarization, you also see that it said stapling. And what stapling allows us to do is essentially um, if the user has an offline computer and they can't connect to the internet, uh, gatekeeper to check if it's a verified or trusted application installer, it'll actually work offline. So that's another cool thing about DMG Canvas is it staples our DMG files. And now if we go into the folder where we've been saving everything, 
we can see now we have our test.dmg installer, which is ready to basically distribute at this point and send off to people. When they launch it, they're going to see the same message you set up. And when they click on the package file, it's going to bring up the actual installer to install those files. And all of this will be trusted because you used your developer ID to uh, sign, notarize, and staple everything. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's all about how to use packages and DMG Canvas to create installers for uh, products on your Mac. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice a week on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow me on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, UXB plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, which comes with cool perks. And also check out the links below for AE Scripts, Adobe Exchange, and Gumroad, where I have plenty of free and paid products and tools for you to try out. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.